nationally, there were over 34,000 unaccompanied youth that were counted as homeless during the the national count last year. And of those, 90.6% of those 34,000 were in that age range of 18 to 24. 40% of those were unsheltered. It means we're seeing 18, 19, 20 year olds living on the street, mm-hmm. living in abandoned buildings, living in cars, just completely in places not fit for human habitation. I wanna give a special thank you to our season two sponsors. MHEB Incorporated, Amish Gazebos, Espen Shade Farms, and Espen Shade Mills. To learn more about our sponsors, visit wsm.org backslash podcast. Hi, and welcome to the Restorers Podcast. I'm Jack Crowley, the president of Water Street, and I just want to say thank you for joining us here on season two of the Restorers Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about youth homelessness. Uh, a little different angle on a unique part of our population that Water Street works with, but also are struggling in our community. And I'm really excited to have a special guest with us today. Lisa Greener is the executive director of Community Basics, Mm -hmm. uh, which is a local affordable housing developer here in Lancaster doing great work. Um, I'm a little biased because I serve on their board, full disclosure. But uh, Lisa, thanks for being here today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate the invitation. Yeah, it's great to have you with us. Could you tell us just a little bit about Community Basics and, and what you guys do? Sure. Um, Community Basics is a nonprofit, so that's always a good thing, Um, developer of affordable housing, and we also manage our properties. So we have over 500 units here in Lancaster County that we own and manage for individuals making between 20 and 60 percent of the area median income. Yeah. We've been talking a lot about affordable housing on this podcast Mm -hmm. recently, and uh, CBI is one of the great developers in our community. Uh, We have another local one, HDC, that does great work, and then others out outside of Lancaster County who do work here, but um, clearly there's a great need. And, uh, and so we appreciate the work you're doing with, with CBI. But today we're talking about youth and homelessness and you're an affordable housing developer. Why did I invite you to join us? Um, tell us about one of the newest projects that Community Basics is working on. Well, I'll give a little bit of backstory in that Community Basics has an underlying um, mission of trying to provide some permanent housing for homeless individuals or families. Mm -hmm. Um, So this would be our fourth homeless project, and we actually decided to designate this one for youth homelessness, so individuals between the ages of 18 and 24, um, up to their 25th birthday, um, to Acknowledge the fact that there are a lot of youth out there that are exiting foster care or just um, not able to stay in their families' homes anymore, and they're not really ready to be out on their own. They don't have the financial stability. They don't have the life skills, that kind of thing. So we just wanted to make the right space for them to be able to survive in society. Yeah. So the new project is going to be right here in the city. On Correct. Manor Street, right? It's called mm-hmm. Manor Youth House. Right. Tell us a little a little bit more about the actual project, the, the house, and who you're partnering with to make it happen. Um, it is a three-story property with six single-room occupancy units and three one-bedroom apartments. There will be shared um, living room, kitchen, dining, laundry, um, and supportive services will also be provided mm-hmm. at the site. What a great addition to the array of services that are that are needed here in our community. It is a very unique population. And you just mentioned to me that another development that is almost completed right mm-hmm. now, just outside the city, uh, also has three units set correct. aside. Is that correct? Right. Bowsman Place Apartments is off of Charles Road, which is considered Lancaster Township, but literally right outside right the city. Right on the line. <laughs> um, we have six homeless set-aside units there, three yeah. are for youth and three are for any people of any age. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful to see um, developers taking into consideration not just creating affordable housing, not just housing that, that hits those uh, more difficult income levels, you know, the, the 20s, the 40s, the 60% mm-hmm. of median income, but actually having set-asides for people who are formerly homeless. Um, that's such a huge deal. Here at Water Street, one of the hardest um, issues we're dealing with with our guests as they complete the program, um, as they've kind of resolved a lot of the 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 besetting issues that led to homelessness, now they're ready to move back into the community and there is nowhere for them to go. Mm -hmm. There's just such a lack of affordable units. Um, And so these additional set-asides 
for formerly homeless uh, individuals is huge. I just can't say that enough. Um, and maybe if there's some developers listening out there, they'll they'll take your lead. Um, <laughs> but youth homelessness. So so Valley Youth House. Um, just a couple things. I think when most people think about homelessness. In America, homelessness in our community, there are certain pictures that come to mind, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the single middle-aged adult, often male with addictions or mental health issues. I think there's a growing awareness of family homelessness, of moms with kids and of intact families and, and facing that. But we don't often think of those 18, 19, 20-year-olds. Right. And so when we talk about youth homelessness, just for, for clarity's sake, we're talking about uh, individuals between 18 and 24 years old, typically. Correct. So just a couple statistics. Nationally, uh, there were over 34,000 unaccompanied youth um, that were counted as homeless uh, during the, the national count last year, uh, or in 23. And of those, 90.6% of those 34,000 were in that age range of 18 to 24. 40% of those were unsheltered means we're seeing 18, 19, 20-year-olds living on the street, mm -hmm. living in abandoned buildings, living in cars, just completely in places not fit for human habitation. Those are some of the national numbers. Are we seeing similar things here in Lancaster? We are seeing an increase in it. There was, I think, a 50% increase between 21 and 23 in the count of homeless youth. Wow. So whether we are counting better or there are more of them... Um, yeah. I, I tend to think there's probably more. Well, and that's an interesting comment. We're counting better. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do believe that's true, but I think there has been a rise. There's something unique, though, about youth homelessness. What are some of the factors that lead to an 18-year-old becoming homeless, a 19-year-old becoming homeless? Uh, what, what's the most common? As you've been working with Valley Youth House and thinking about this population. So it is a variety of things. There are those that are aging out of foster care. There are those that, you know, when the, they're living at home, their parents say at age 18, you're out on your own, you're done. Um, there are those that are having, um, that are part of the LGBTQ community. And their parents say, I want nothing to do with it. Yeah. And and they kick them out. And it's not really fair to the child. Yeah. Um, and at that point, I still consider them a child. Um, I re realize that they are young adults. Yeah. Um, but there's still lots of things in life to learn. Yeah. And that disruption, any kind of disruption like that at an early age. Um, back to that you know, counting more accurately. The other thing that, that I think we've seen, and I'd, I'd be interested in hearing uh, your perspective on, is that typically an 18, 19-year-old who no longer is living at home, they've been ousted from foster care because they've aged out of the system. Mm -hmm. Their family has, has kind of pushed them out. Their first stop usually isn't the street, right? Like no. what, what are those 18, 19-year-olds doing when it first happens? That makes it hard for us to know how big the problem is. They're bouncing from friend to friend to friend and basically sofa surfing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they'll stay at a house as long as they can. And then somebody says, you know, you've really got to go. So then they move on to the next one. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes they get lucky and they land at a good spot where somebody's willing to help them and, and give them some guidance so that they can move on in life. Right. Um, but a lot of times they aren't. And then the next thing you know, they're in a car, they're on the street. Yeah. They're in bad situations. Um, and we know that homeless youth are way more susceptible. I mean, I'll go yes. there. I, it's, it's hard to think about, but we recognize that those 18, 19-year-old, 20-year-olds who, who don't have connections, uh, when they do end up out on the street, they're very susceptible to trafficking um, in yes. a variety of ways. They're susceptible to abuse and, and being manipulated. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things when we see some of our younger guests arrive at Water Street, when they do make their way to us um, at that young age, often it's because of one of those experiences that finally push them to the point of needing to come to us. But there's a lot of other kind of unique situations. So I, I back to that that count thing. I think one of the things we recognize um, every year HUD does, a, and and our local mm -hmm. coalition participates in that point in time count. Right. We know that that number is an undercount because it's impossible to find everybody who's unsheltered to scour every inch of the county. So we know just by nature, but then it is also the definition of homelessness uh, that HUD uses, where you are literally 
on the street in a car or in a building that's not fit for human habitation. So right. uh, an 18 year old kid who's kicked out of his family's house or ages out of the foster care system, but finds a friend from school who will let them stay with their family and they're couch surfing. Mm -hmm. That doesn't count as homeless in HUD's definition. Right. And so even when we look at these numbers of unsheltered and sheltered youth homelessness, we know that number is incredibly low compared to reality. Um, my work with youth through the years, I can't even tell you how many kids that were participants at Teen Haven that were involved in our youth center programs, spent time living in some other family's house for long stretches. Um, and many of them after they graduated from high school ended up in that situation. Um, so it's a, it's a reality that we see every day. Currently, I looked at our numbers today. Um, I believe we have nine individuals between the age of 18 and 24 um, living here at Water Street, unaccompanied, not with their families. Um, and I think, think five of them are under the age of 20. Wow. So we're seeing, you know, young kids coming to Water Street. And maybe it's just because I'm old, but they really feel like young kids. So as we're thinking about coming alongside somebody at that age who hasn't had life experience, it's one thing to work with somebody who's had a couple jobs and maybe had a modicum of success or stability in their life at some point, but then there's been life disruption, a health issue, an addictions issue, a mental health issue that may have precipitated homelessness. There's a certain way you can walk alongside somebody who has those experiences, but for an 18 or 19 year old who's never done it on their own, that support system that's needed is probably a little different. So I'm, I'm curious, as you've worked on um, on this new house that's going to be built uh, with, with nine, nine units, correct, mm -hmm. uh, for youth who are homeless, how is that different than, like, say, cloister apartments that was for single, ad single adults, um, not targeting youth, where... It really was about the apartment and not that there's no support services, but it was really focused on just housing. This is more than just housing. Right. Um, things like Cloister, um, that it's basically designed so that you have an apartment and one of the qualifications is you've been experiencing homelessness. Um, it gives you a, a clean place to be, a clean, safe, and supported area to be. Um, as opposed to living in an, a vehicle right, or right. on the street. Where with Manor Youth House, our vision is to have a home environment. A community. Yes. So each youth will have their own room and bathroom if they're in the single room occupancy. If they're in the one-bedroom apartment, that is a one-bedroom apartment, apartment like we yeah. all know. Um, but the house, the house will have a larger living room, kitchen, dining room, so that they can all congregate there. Mm -hmm. They can learn from each other. They can share their stories. They can share their experiences with mm -hmm. each other so that hopefully that they can see yeah. that they are not alone. Yeah, There are other people of their same age group experiencing similar situations. Yeah. And in addition to that, somebody's going to be there to help guide them and teach them things that perhaps they haven't learned yet. Yeah. So that's, uh, to me, the two things that stand up. It's the relational support of others mm -hmm. who are in a similar situation. But it is having somebody who's skilled to facilitate some of the learning that they need to go through. Right. Um, and skilled with that age group. Yeah. I think that's one of the things we see, especially with youth exiting from the foster care system. There are amazing foster care families out there mm -hmm. um, doing f just unbelievable work. I have a number of friends who have fostered and, and relatives who have fostered kids. And it's just what an amazing gift to a child to do that and do it well. We also know that there are more kids in the system than there are really good foster homes. Um, right. And especially with older kids, it's not always in a home either. They're, they're in the foster care system, but they might be staying in a group home mm -hmm. or they might be staying in some other kind of facility. Um, rather than with a family who can really instill those life skills and life lessons. Is that something that's contemplated at Manor Youth House is like some of those basic life skills, like, great, right. I got an apartment with a kitchen, but I've I don't never know how cooked to cook. a meal in my <laughs> life. I don't know what kind of groceries to buy to eat healthy, to, yeah. to 
make to nourish my body, let alone nourish my mind. Right. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of those things that we are recognizing that you know, each each individual is going to come in with some sort of different background. Yeah. So we're trying to make sure that we cover those gaps that they have in whatever the background was. Mm. So when we think about you know youth becoming homeless. Um, you know, we, we mentioned about the foster care system and, and kind of family disruption, but we also see a lot of instances of child abuse or neglect and domestic violence that leads to a kid needing to exit uh, for safety reasons. Um, the National Network for Youth did a study and 90% of youth who are ac- ac- accessing youth shelters talk about experiencing difficulties at home constant fighting, screaming, and everything. One of our 18-year-old guests uh, said, my household was always uncertain. It made it hard for me to figure out what I wanted to do in the future because there was so much uncertainty around me all the time. So I had no plans for the future. Um, Manor Youth House is not a short-term solution. Mm -hmm. It's not like come in for a few weeks and we're going to we're going to solve your situation. Uh, why? It, it's designed to be longer term. First of all, what what is it designed to be for, for the youth who are coming there? It's designed to have them stay up to two years. Mm-hmm. We re- recognize that some youth will be ready to move on in, in three months or six months, right. but the, the ultimate is maximum of yeah. two years. Um, we and also put a lot of thought into even creating the house and it's it's actually very secure. Mm. So they will have either a swipe badge or cart or something to access the stairwells and to access the actual Mm. property. Um, We wanted them to feel safe and secure in their location, no matter what they experienced prior. And that's huge for a kid who hasn't experienced safety, even in their own home. Mm -hmm. And then they've been displaced and now they're on the street or bouncing from house to house, that lack of safety how can you even think about the future? How can you begin to work on those things? So the the two years as a potential length of stay feels like it gives stability. Mm-hmm. Um, and that feels like step one. And so now the kids are in a stable place. And, and what's some of the focus then that, that the su- service providers from Valley Youth House will do with them uh, once they're, they're there and feeling a little bit more secure, a little bit safer, and now they've got some time to work with them. So, I mean, obviously we talked initially about the life skills and, and you know, it just the, th- the things in the kitchen, um, as well as making sure that you keep your room clean. You know, hmm. uh, we all remember our <laughs> kids as teenagers. Right, right. Um, so, you know, it, we, they've got to realize that, you know, they're an adult now. They right. need they have the responsibility to keep their room and their bathroom area clean and, and yeah. so that it doesn't become dirty germy. Um, and then the other component, once they're, they've achieved a lot of the basics, what we consider basic stuff, we'll move on to things like, you know, finding a job, securing mm-hmm. employment, um, working on a resume, um, potentially working with SACA to create the, you know, the, with Tech Centro and give yeah. them some more job skills so that they can have a better income to afford something better. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And it feels like, I love the fact that there's enough time built into it <laughs> mm-hmm. um, because it is going to like, Some if, of on day, if, if on day one, you're like, okay, let's start working on a resume and we're going to get you, get you a new job. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> I just need to know I can sleep mm-hmm. tonight. And, and as our guest said in, in her quote, you know, like I couldn't think about the future. I couldn't mm-hmm. think about anything beyond today because of how uncertain the house was. And then, and then you go from that to even less stability on the street. Um, I love the fact that there's the ability to kind of, let's focus on life skills. Let's mm-hmm. focus on caring. Because when they do move out of Manor Youth House, they're going to need to find their own apartment and be able to care for it mm-hmm. um, and take good care of it so that they're not exited for the wrong reasons there. Right. Um, and, and, you know, self-care, I think, should be primary. Mm-hmm. You need to take care of yourself first. Yeah. And then you can figure out what the next step is that's beyond your internal mode. One of the other things that we've seen is that um, there's a significant number of, of youth who are experiencing homelessness who never completed high school. 
um, which makes it that much harder. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how are you going to find those jobs without even a high school diploma? So you mentioned SACA, mm -hmm. uh, fantastic organization that does workforce development and, and individual training. Um, how far is SACA Tech Centro from Manor Youth House? It's close, but I couldn't tell you exactly yeah, how far. I mean, it's like right in the neighborhood. Is, right, was, was exactly. And, and we that's part of why we picked the location we did, mm. is it is close to a lot of things. It's right on the bus route. It, it's mm. real close to quite a few jobs, you know, yeah. from Kunzler up to Manor Shopping Center and beyond. Yeah, um, yeah it there's just tons of resources in a short distance. Yeah. From the location. One final thought to lean into. I want. I want to go back to one of the things we said at the beginning because I think there's a generalized lack of awareness of just how many young people are experiencing homelessness, and and we've seen it here at Water Street, um, and and we we see it kind of in waves. It's mm -hmm. interesting. Um, I know there's, there was a time where, you know, there's always a smattering of, of, you know, younger people. You're like, wow, man, that, that kid looks really young. Are they really on their own here? Um, and they're 19 years old, 20 years old. And then there's times it feels like there's a wave and we'll see, you know, 10, 15, um, kids all, all experiencing it. So there's a general lack of awareness, I think, uh, with that. But then there's that aspect of the hidden aspect of youth homelessness, mm -hmm. Um, it's interesting to me when you proposed this, was there any resistance here in, in Lancaster County from, you know, the funders, from the service providers to say, why are you doing youth homelessness? Why are you doing a, a house just for them? None. Yeah. <laughs> we, every time we presented it, oh, that's a great idea. We really need that. Yeah. Um, you know, we started out talking with the homelessness coalition and just kind of kept creeping out from there. Um, sought out someone that we felt was more of an expert in the field, which is how we found Valley Youth House, mm -hmm. um, and worked with them to create what we felt was be the best structure for this yeah. age group and this time in their life. Um, and that's, it yeah. just kind of kept getting bigger and growing. And now we've, we're just trying yeah. to get all the funding together yeah. so we can actually start construction. Yeah. Well, I'm excited that it's coming. I think, you know, that reality that when you talk to those who are working around issues of homelessness or those working with youth populations, the school support teams mm -hmm. uh, that are working with families and children in homelessness, there is a clear recognition of a need and a growing need. It is hidden from the community because kids are out there couch surfing uh, banding together and hiding together sometimes. They mm -hmm. don't want to be seen mm -hmm. because they have not felt safe even in their own home. Why would I feel safe anywhere else? And so it is kind of a hidden secret of just how big the problem is. I'm grateful that here in Lancaster County, um, our service providers see the issue, care about the kids, and uh, and we're starting to, to move the needle um, you know, Water Street's been walking in this for a while, but but to know that there are others out there um, stepping in to, to try to address the issue, to try to find solutions. Um, I think there's some upstream solutions we probably need to focus on even more mm -hmm. around foster care and around supports to families that are in crisis so that when the kid turns 18, they're not left on their own. Um, but I'm glad you could join us today, Lisa. Appreciate your input. Appreciate, yeah. really appreciate the work you're doing. Uh, at Manor Youth House. And thank you for listening to us today. Um, this is a tough issue and it's there's a lot of uh, challenges in walking with young people experiencing homelessness. Uh, but we're grateful you're joining us here at Water Street. <laughs>